electric. Hi everyone, welcome back to the EV puzzle. And yeah, welcome back to my garage. Uh, the videos that I do in my garage seem to be well liked and I don't really know why. I have to end up sitting on a, a step ladder. It's actually pretty cold today, uh, middle of September. Got my hoodie on. So it's not the most comfortable in here, but you know, if you like it being amongst all the tech then uh, that's a good thing, isn't it? And today I want to talk to you about why I've installed some more Pylon Tech batteries. So I've added some more. I've added three US 5000 batteries. So that's another 15 kilowatt hours of storage. But the big question is why? If you follow the channel and you've seen some of my videos before, especially the battery sizing one, I've talked about this configuration and how five kilowatt hours is enough. Five kilowatt hours might have been the perfect size for me from a return on investment, from a payback point of view, because the smaller the battery, the harder it's going to work, the more you're going to use it and the more value you're going to get from it. So you'll get that payback sooner. When you've got a battery as big as my battery here, a lot of it during the year is going to sit idle, not used. I'm only using a smaller percent of the state of charge, in which case a lot of the battery I've paid for is sat there not earning any money. So from a monetary point of view, a payback point of view, having a big system over configured with more capacity isn't the ideal. But as I explained in my video, five kilowatt hours was enough. 10 kilowatt hours was probably perfect with some con extra contingency on top. And that meant a lot of my winter heating would be done just from battery and cheap rate energy. But still some of the days were 10 kilowatt hours, some of the really worst days I might have ended up on peak rate because the battery would have been exhausted overnight. So I went for 17 and a half kilowatt hours, 14.4 kilowatt hours usable. And that was these pylon techs, the five US 3000. So it's five times three and a half kilowatt hours. And that worked really well. I have gone through a couple of winters now and I have not used any peak energy. So it has worked. So the question is why? Why if 17 and a half kilowatt hours, these five US 3000s, if that's enough, why have I added another cabinet and another 15 kilowatt hours of three US 5000? So I've already said it's not a money thing. It's not about payback or return on investment. I don't want my money back from buying these extra batteries. So what are they providing for me if it's not a return on my investment? And there's two things really as to why um, I've gone for extra capacity. The first is when we are using the original 17 and a half kilowatt hours in the winter and it is really cold and we run the state of charge lower, I still feel like I'm conserving energy. I still feel like I'm managing the heat system to ensure that we don't run out of storage, especially when we get down to like 20 percent, because 20 percent is quite close to 10 and 10 isn't granular. So 10 will go to five and go to zero very, very fast. So once you are at 10, there isn't 10% left, there's a fewer percent really after the 10. So even though these pylon techs can discharge down to 95%, it's not granular, so you don't get that extra capacity at the lower ends. So I set it and don't like going beyond 20 because I don't like to be empty on 10. So if I'm in that situation where I'm conserving energy and I'm thinking about my heating, etc., because of the capacity of the batteries, it, it would be nice to let go. It would be nice to have enough capacity that even on the worst winter's days, I'm not concerned about our state of charge of the battery. I'm not concerned about when the heating's on, when it's off, all those sort of things. So it's not, it's not like range anxiety. It's not battery anxiety on the state of charge, but it's a consideration towards, I'm thinking about it. And I am a thinker. I am an overthinker with these things. So for some people saying, what on earth are you on about? Just use it and turn it on. That's fine. That's how your mind works. My, my brain works differently. It is thinking about the data and thinking about the state of charge all of the time. So now that we've added um, some of these extra batteries and I'll explain the configuration we've got in just a moment, but I've already seen the capacity go up. So because we've now got more storage and more kilowatt hours, I can discharge more during the evenings um, to export it to earn some income. And the state of charge isn't going down to low level. So I'm already noticing that I can use the battery more. And yet the state of charge isn't dropping to low levels where I'm not concerned, but I'm thinking about it. So it's, it's had the right effect. The extra capacity now means that I can use the same amount of energy I was before, but I'm still left with 40 or 50 percent battery instead of 20% battery. I'm left with a lot more, which leaves me a lot more comfortable. 
So this system is not very highly used anymore. The capacity isn't stretched. There's not a lot of cycles going through it. So it's going to last longer. It's not going to be stressed as much with um, high charge rates and high discharge rates. And it's not being worked very hard. So longevity goes up, which is a good thing. But my thinking about the system and having to cater for, in my mind, cater for what to use and how to use it to maintain the percentage. I, I am addicted to using just cheap rate energy. I do not like using peak rate energy. So if I've now got a system with so much solar and so much um, battery storage that I'm never going to use peak rate again, then that's a brilliant thing. I'm going to be really happy with that. But again, remember, this, this is a bit of a game to me. This is a hobby as well. I'm really enjoying having solar and batteries and the game of managing it and using just cheap rate energy. So it, it's a good thing. I'm doing it not just for the environment, not for the money savings, but there's a feel good factor about having enough capacity to do what you want when you want and not be concerned about running out, not having to think, oh, I can't do that today because I've only got 10% left of this or something. So having more battery capacity, having more solar just gives that extra flexibility. And that's the main reason why I've done that, that comfort level. That's why I've done it. The other thing is, yes, I am addicted to battery storage and solar panels. So the fact that these were on offer from Power Different, these were a, shall we say, a cancelled order. It was a, a test order ordered by someone to see whether it would work for them and it didn't so they'd already ordered it already configured it and used it but it had to be taken out they weren't using it so um, i got them at a reduced price so how could i how could i turn away 15 kilowatt hours extra storage for two and a half thousand pounds so i thought that was very very good value and it's it's proven one of the design characteristics that i liked about my victron inverter and pylon tech batteries being modular it's very easy to add extra batteries and i say very easy in, even to a layperson i could do it but i'm still apprehensive of doing it. i'd rather have an installer actually do it um, but it is very handy to have this modular nature where i could just bring another cabinet if i didn't want to squeeze an extra one in there and I can put three more batteries in here in the cabinet and it just connects and it works. So unlike some other battery systems, we have to buy the whole thing again. Pylon tech batteries are modular. You can buy the old ones, the new ones. They're all compatible and it does make it easy if a module fails or I want to expand and add one module, two modules, three modules. It's very granular. So I love the idea that I've installed more capacity and proven that the idea of this modular system is actually working. So I need to do a separate video on the configuration of how I installed it because there are some issues with the Pylon Tech batteries that you want to take account of when you're planning your install to ensure that US 3000s will work alongside US 5000s and you can stack the right number together and you can put them into strings and the voltages are right. So there are some things to think about and I'll do that in a separate video about the technicalities of mixing and matching US 3000 and US 5000 batteries. But for this one, what, what did I actually do? Well, over here we have um, the Victron Lynx bus bar. So what that has is two sets of positive and negative wires that connect to it. It's just a bus bar. There's nothing intelligent about it. And those two positive and negative strings are what we connect to the DC side of the batteries here. The US 3000s, there are five of them. I had them split into two strings on those two sets of positive and negative cables into the links. One for two batteries, one for three batteries. So I already had them in uneven strings. Two strings connected together on network cables. So the Victron saw it as one data connected string of batteries. But physically with the DC cables, it was connected with two inputs to the links. And then from the links, it goes to the Victron inverter. So what I've done is disconnected one of the sets of the DC cables on the links and moved that over to this cabinet, the new cabinet with the three US 5000. So that now becomes one DC string of batteries connecting into the links. The other string I've made the five batteries. Well, actually, it's only three because my cables aren't long enough to string up to the other two at the moment. So I've got to order some longer cables. But the five will be one string and the three here will be one string. So balance wise, we've got 15 kilowatt hours and 17 and a half kilowatt hours. That's close enough to be balanced. 
Previously, I had two and three batteries, US 3000, so I was three and a half kilowatt hours imbalanced between the two strings. So I'm very confident that this balance with only two and a half kilowatt hours between the two will be pretty good. So that's what I've basically done. It's disconnecting the DC connections to the Lynx box to so have one physical DC string here in this cabinet and one D string one DC string in here. And those two DC strings already existed, so it's been a very easy change. The hard bit about this install is the physical manhandling because they are blum and heavy. So getting the racks right, getting the shelves right, getting the batteries in the right position. Um, with this cabinet, I've got a gap between my three and my two string, and that gap is too big for the standard DC cables that come with the Pylon Tech batteries. So I need to order the longer ones so that I can bridge that gap between the two. It's either that or I've got to take the batteries out and reinstall some different shelf racking on the inside so that those gaps are narrowed. So at the moment I'm up and running with three US 5000s and three US 3000s. So that's 15 kilowatt hours and 10 and a half. That's 25 and a half kilowatt hours is what I'm live with at the moment. So as soon as I get those longer cables to connect those last two batteries, we'll end up with 15 kilowatt hours, 17 and a half kilowatt hours, a total of 32 and a half kilowatt hours of battery storage. The problem with having so much storage is how to charge it. Now this is one of the issues really about, some people in the comments will say I've installed too much storage. And in some respects I have, because I've gone over the limit of what I can charge on AC. So if these were emptied during the day, then overnight on Octopus Intelligent Go, I get six hours of AC charging, cheap rate, seven pence a kilowatt hour. And that's what I want to charge these up with. But if I only get six hours and the charge rate from my Victron inverter is maximum 3.6 kilowatts, that's six times 3.6. That's 21.8, is that right? 21.8 kilowatt hours maximum energy I can get into these batteries. So why do I need 32 kilowatt hours of storage if I can only get 21.8 kilowatt hours of storage into it overnight? And the big thing to remember is I'm not gonna be discharging them all the way to zero. I'm gonna be discharging them less. So I'm only topping up the top half. So it will still work. Plus also tariffs change. Um, I might end up on Octopus Go one day, which only has at the moment four hours of cheap rate energy. Octopus Intelligent has six. Maybe it'll encourage me to go with um, Octopus Agile. And then I, I'm not restricted by how many cheap hours I've got. I'm just restricted by how cheap the energy is. Some days we'll have a lot more than six hours of cheap rate energy. Some days we'll have hardly any hours of cheap rate energy. So charging them will be different. So, so I'm envisaging tariffs being different, uh, the energy market being different, prices being different, but I've set myself up with enough solar and enough battery to have a lot of flexibility. If I charge these from solar, I can discharge it if I want and earn money with Octopus Flux or something like that. Um, I've got the flexibility of exporting a lot for some value, but still having state of charge, still having capacity to do everything I want as well. By having so much capacity, I'm not running near the limit, so I'm comfortable doing all of these things. So for me, this is about future-proofing my solution and pleasing myself with my fun system by having so much storage. But yes, I have created a slight problem that AC charging them now isn't easy because I can only charge a maximum of 21.8 kilowatt hours overnight. So there you go, that's why I've added 15 kilowatt hours more battery storage because I'm addicted to battery storage and solar power and cheap rate energy. Also because I just want to see higher state of charge rates. I don't want to drain the battery as far. I want to feel a lot more comfortable with the amount of energy we've got here and how to use it. So I'm expecting this winter to have more power, more stored energy available to me for heating and for other things and to just be more relaxed about it. So it's gonna be really interesting to watch my monthly videos and see whether our usage goes up as a result of having this extra power. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna be fascinated to see the difference between this year and last year, because we've got slightly more solar, we've got now more battery storage. So what's our consumption going to be like? So watch out for the next video as well, where I'll talk about the technicality issues of US 3000 and US 5000 and how they work together and how I ensured that the voltages were nice and level before we connected them. I'll share that information with you about using mixed pylon tech batteries in the same string. Take care. See you again soon for more energy related videos. Bye for now.